Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox and a look at Thief from Eidos Montreal, the same studio that brought us Deus Ex Human Revolution. Like Deus Ex, it's an attempt to reboot a beloved series and bring it to an age where the characters don't look like they were smashed into existence with a hammer and chisel. <coughs> I would have went for the pickle jar pass so a lot more weight. Garrett. Shit. You play as the light-fingered, fleet-footed tea-leaf of the title as he attempts to lift every semi-precious item within 500 metres and avoid the attentions of Timothy Dalton Lookalike, the thief-taker general. Oh, and save the city from mysterious forces unknown, because, you know, it can't all be about you. The result is what feels like a proper old-school stealth game. The obvious point of comparison is Dishonored, where you have the option to go loud if you get impatient, but here, if you try that, you're likely to be run through by the nearest guard. I'll find the friggin' bastard. Less freedom of choice sounds like a bad thing, but in this case it's not really. It forces you to actually observe each new location, plan every move and execute those plans quickly and quietly. It's what Thief games were always about, only now there's more advanced lighting and AI to play with. Though, how we managed to remain unheard with all that cutlery clanking around in our pockets remains perhaps the greatest mystery of all. One thing we weren't sure was going to make the cut was the more open levels of the original games. While there are a few completely linear sequences and the game maintains perhaps a slightly tighter focus, as the missions progress most areas have multiple routes depending on which gadgets you have available, such as rope arrows for scaling walls and wrench tools for getting at ventilation systems. One level in particular is a mansion riddled with secret passages, something we only discovered after we'd already run in the front door and clonked all the guards on the head with our blackjack. The city really is the star of the game, it's hugely atmospheric and is a sort of pseudo-Victorian medieval mashup with some absolutely stunning architecture that's enormous in scale. Eastwick City House. No one ever called his work subtle. The big criticism levelled at Dishonored was that there was no real chance to explore what looked like a fascinating city. In Thief, the city acts as a hub that you'll need to sneak through to get to missions and serves as a location itself for the optional jobs and side missions that rack up throughout the game. The main story will take you about 10 hours, give or take, and it's tempting just to charge through it, but it's definitely worth mopping up some of these mini heists along the way to get an even greater feel for the world. After Thief Deadly Shadows' mission The Cradle, the rules are you have to have at least one scary level, and Thief's Moira Asylum chapter does the job beautifully. It's got the foreboding atmosphere, half-heard whisperings, and buttock-clenching jump scares down to a T. We're not going to say any more than that at the risk of spoiling the surprise. As we've talked about before, there's a real tactility to Garrett's movement as he peeks around corners, swoops between shadows, and, uh, gropes paintings. The new free-running system, similar to Assassin's Creed, encourages you to stick to rooftops and walkways if at all possible, which is legit thiefy behaviour. It's not absolutely perfect mechanically. Occasionally you'll make a pig's ear of the free-running over some tricky terrain and fall comedically on top of a guard. There are also moments where you have to line the camera up very precisely on an X button prompt, which can be fiddly. Basically, it's not a game that seems designed for doing things in a hurry, and that's usually where the wheels fall off the wagon. Frame rates can get a bit choppy on the Xbox One version, and you'll occasionally get that Unreal Engine thing where it forgets to put the proper version of someone's face on until a few seconds into the cutscene. Oh, and talking of, the cutscenes are crying out for performance capture so the characters match the quality of the environments. This might be a really bad idea. The biggest single misstep is one broken puzzle involving cracking a safe, which had us wondering if the game, or perhaps our brain, had gone a bit wrong. As it turned out, it's just poorly designed and badly explained, but that didn't stop us smashing our head against it for the better part of an hour. In this case, it's so spectacularly badly thought out, yet easy to fix, we'd be amazed if it wasn't patched in the next few weeks. Until then, though, it's likely to slam the brakes on progression for a huge number of players. That aside, Thief is definitely worth your time. It has a beautiful world to explore, sophisticated mechanics and, crucially, replayability. All the missions, including side quests, can be replayed as soon as you've completed them. I'm about to be assaulted! You might well blunder through the first playthrough like a pissed shoplifter, but in doing so you'll identify ways that you can be more efficient, bypass a confrontation or even skip a whole chunk of the level. Plus, there are, as you might imagine, an entire sack full of collectibles to swipe and display in your super conspicuous clock tower lair. 
More than anything though, we just love the world. Big imposing mansions and castles, gloomy claustrophobic alleyways and rain-slicked rooftops, all of them begging to be explored and looted. Most games are exhausted and discarded once we've finished them, but we're already planning our next trip to the big city. <sighs> So that was our look at the final version of Thief on Xbox One. If you found this useful, drop us a like and subscribe to Outside Xbox for plenty more on new games as they arrive. See you next time. Rock's teeth. <laughs>